Hi, my name is Mary Ann Kluth and I'm an artist in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm on lockdown here in my house with my husband, my baby Ronan, and my dog. And today um, I was going to talk to you a little bit about my art practice and then we're going to make geodesic domes together out of cardboard. So part of my practice, I like to make models before I do these large scale installations. These installations are based on my own photographs of theme park landscapes and then I paint them um, sort of like set design. So this one was built outdoors in uh, Sheboygan, Wisconsin with the John Michael Kohler Art Center. Um, I also do digital collages of my theme park photographs. So this was like a, a test print for an installation that I did in San Francisco. Um, what else do I have here? I've got, this is a reference for an installation that's up right now at the Contemporary Jewish Museum in San Francisco. Um, and then this is a model made out of foam core of an installation that is up right now at the Oakland Museum of California. It's Ronan's favorite. And um, it's the ceramic mountain was all made at the Kohler factory in Wisconsin. Um, and then here in my studio, in addition to models, I make hand cut collages out of my theme park photographs. So these are cliffs from Toontown and part of the Matterhorn at Disneyland in Anaheim. And then the clouds are from Sanrio Pearl Land, which is outside of Tokyo. Today we're making um, geodesic cardboard domes. I know everybody probably has a lot of cardboard around. And if you're homeschooling, this is kind of a great math manipulative uh, sort of Montessori project. Um, I made a little prototype before I made my first dome. And on, if you look here now, there is um, a template and it will tell you how many of each of the hexagons and pentagons to cut out. Okay, so on, if you are here now, you can download the template and what you wind up with is a paper uh, pattern for the hexagons and the pentagons. You're gonna cut out 14 hexagons and six oh, pentagons, yeah. and also four irregular quadrilaterals. Um, and what you do is you just trace them onto cardboard. Any kind of cardboard will work. I know a lot of people have Amazon boxes. Um, just want to shout out Amazon Strike and Express Solidarity. Um, and I'm not going to do the cutting right now because I have a baby on me. But um, once you've traced it onto your cardboard, then you, you can use any kind of straight edge. I use a utility knife. I just slice around the shapes to cut them out. You can also use scissors. Um, whatever you think is safest at the time. Okay, so if you want to make a larger dome um, and you want to make the template bigger, all you need is like a ruler or anything with parallel straight lines. Um, and I've already done this, but I can demonstrate again um, tracing around your template to make a larger template. So you trace around all the edges and you make sure that the um, lines stay parallel and the angles of the corners stay the same. And then you wind up with a larger template. So you cut that out and you use that instead. And everything else stays the same. You make the same number of each of the shapes. So once you have your cardboard cut out, you're ready to start putting your dome together. Um, I have two different kinds of tape here. I've got scotch tape and packing tape. Either kind of tape would work, whatever you've got in your house. Um, if your kids are gonna play with the dome or if you're making a bigger dome and you have packing tape, I would use packing tape. It's um, stronger, but um, in a pinch, scotch tape will work and that's what I'm gonna use um, because it's cheaper. So I have my shapes already cut out and organized. Um, I have my pentagon, my hexagons, and my irregular quadrilaterals. Um, this dome, is, the shape is like a soccer ball. Um, it was also the same shape as a, a nanoparticle invented by Buckminster Fuller. 
Um, so that's kind of another homeschool tangent of this project. You can like do a Google uh, rabbit hole search of Buckminster Fuller. He, uh, he worked in many different scales. So Bucky balls are tiny and they're just made of carbon, but he also invented um, geodesic dome architecture uh, that he thought would make, uh, it would be more energy efficient and it would be kind of a futuristic utopian way of designing homes for people. Okay, so I'm taping the hexagons around the center pentagon. It's gonna make like a flower shape. Um, and Ronan is napping. The baby disappeared. Um, there we go. And I'm taping on both sides. When I am pulling the tape off the dispenser, I'm trying to get it as close to the same size as the side of the shape that I'm taping without going over. Um, I'm trying to minimize wrinkles in the tape. Um, it's a good kind of practice activity for kids uh, to eyeball the length of the tape and to smooth out all the wrinkles depending on how old your kids are. Um, obviously Ronan's a little too young. Here we go. So we're making like a flower shape and what I'm mostly paying attention to as I'm taping is trying to get all the corners to line up. Um, it's less important that the sides are perfectly flush. I know everyone's gonna cut the cardboard differently. Um, you don't need it to be perfect but the closer you get your corners to line up, the more neatly the dome will come together as a solid. So now I've got like a flower shape with um, five hexagons around the pentagon in the middle. The pentagon in the middle is the top of the dome. So the next step is to start taping the hexagons to each other and that will start to create the curve in the dome um, because in 3d space the uh, the little gaps between them will form like a gusset So I'm just gonna continue to do that for all of these gaps. You wanna make sure to press down firmly with the tape to make sure it's sticking well. This project, I got the idea because my sister crocheted me a house for my dog. Um, and then I wanted to like design different dog houses with her for her to crochet. Um, but one of the things that I like to do, cause I don't crochet or knit or anything is um, to make sculptures and prototypes um, in three-dimensional shapes out of paper and cardboard. Um, so it's kind of a soothing thing to do to take your mind off of the news. Got that last seam. It's 
Something that's nice about the scotch tape is if you stick it on wrong, you can always pull it off. Um, it's not permanent. And that is the basic technique of um, attaching the pieces of cardboard together. So as you continue to uh, tape your shapes together, you kind of keep, uh, keep an eye on which pentagon is the top, and you'll see there's the same flower shape of hexagons uh, circling the pentagon. And then into each of the kind of joints between the hexagons, you put another round of pentagons uh, all the way around. And um, in between the two pentagons that you want to be the front, you just leave a gap. And that's the door. That's where like your cat would be able to get through. Or if your kids are gonna play with it, um, they get the, the toys can use this as a door. Um, and after the pentagons, and you do another round of hexagons, and that will leave on the bottom these little divots. Um, and we want it to sit smoothly on the floor. So that's where the irregular quadrilaterals fit. And those are just um, the pentagons that would fit there if you were gonna make this a complete sphere. Um, but they just have the points cut off so that it sits flush with the floor or the tabletop. So I'm gonna put this on the table. Um, and mine, I when I made my prototype, uh, I did it in like pastel colors because I wanted it to be kind of like a fun, soothing, sort of nice feeling uh, place for my cat to hang out or for my kid to play. So um, I'm going to finish painting this one. Uh, I use acrylic paints um, and these are the same paints that I use when I do um, large scale installations. This, I learned a lot of these painting techniques when I worked at a theme park for children in Oakland called Children's Fairyland. Um, that's kind of where I started being interested in play structures and um, I was already interested in theme parks that's why I was working there. Um, but yeah, so I'll get going. Uh, for this one, the pink on top that I've already got there is quinacridone crimson and titanium white. So um, I'm using liquid golden acrylics. You can also use Nova Color. They're available online. Um, they both have a high pigment load. Uh, Nova Color is a little bit cheaper. Um, you can use, if you have house paint, uh, whatever you've got on hand. Um, you could also like just let your kids color it with markers, um, however you want to decorate it. Uh, so, let's see, I've got a purple on there and now I'm gonna put some blue. Okay, so I have a little bit of permanent cyan and the, or primary cyan, permanent violet and quinacridone magenta in my paint here. I'm just gonna mix it up. I just mix with a brush, put a little bit more white in there, and this is actually not great technique. Like when you're painting large surfaces, you want to paint with the largest brush that you have. You want to try and match the size of the surface to the size of the brush. Um, I'm just gonna use a slightly small brush for this, but um, if you want to get it smooth, use a larger brush. Um, and then for the transitions between purple and blue, I'm going to use, it's uh, like a golden glazing liquid um, that just because the acrylic dries so quickly, this will help the, um, the paint stay wet and allow you to blend it. So here we go. I'm going to pick up where I left off yesterday and finish painting my prototype dome. So when you get that border edge between the two colors while it's still wet, you just take some of the glazing liquid on your brush and then you can blend the colors together and you get a smoother transition. And if the colors don't all match, that's totally fine. 
um, it's going to make it more interesting. I know that I'm going to do a green layer at the bottom, so I'm going to leave a little gap and just keep painting around my dome and around the colors that I already painted. One of the reasons I like golden is uh, the liquid golden paints is you can thin them out um, and they still have a high pigment load so you get good coverage. Um, so you can see here you don't see very much of the uh, cardboard showing through even though I've only got one layer of paint. And so when you're looking for a paint, it doesn't really matter what brand you use, um, but that's just a, a thing I learned is to look for good coverage. And you can see using the glazing liquid to blend it really gets um, the transition smooth quickly. So this, if you're gonna be painting with permanent paint like acrylics in the house, it's, it's good for older kids. It's good for like parents and kids together. If you're gonna have your kids decorate it, I would, you can use tempera paint, which comes out, or um, have them paint outside. I would just caution against getting acrylic paint in your carpet or on your clothes because it uh, does not come out. So here we go. I'm going to turn it so you can see the part I'm working on. Okay. You can see I'm using like cheap uh, chip brushes. I got these at, I think, Dick Blick. You can use uh, sponge brushes if you have like crafty sponge brushes. Um, for just like flat color like this, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Um, if you want to do like fine details, so if you were going to go and decorate this with like stars or flowers or something, um, like I would try and use a nicer brush. Because it can seem like nice brushes are a ripoff, but uh, sometimes it's worth it because you just want to have better control. Paint. Okay. Getting that transition line blended. Just blend it all the way around. There we go. And so the bottom color, I'm going to do like a green. Um, I'm gonna keep my brushes wet in between colors because the acrylic will dry on your brushes and ruin them. Um, the next color, I'm gonna mix a green in this same container so it will be closely related to the blue and that'll help the colors blend together well. And I'm just using teal uh, one thing I like about golden is it tells you what the pigments are, um, but that color is a mixture and it's just called teal. Um, I'm going to use a bunch of that white. I'm going to use a slightly larger brush. So I have teal, titanium white, and the blue I was just using. I'm just going to mix it up. And here I've got a bigger brush. Like I was saying, it's better to use a bigger brush for a larger surface area. So I'm just going to paint the bottom of the dome and blend the transition between the green and the blue. I saw Ben Venom's video and I noticed that we both have the same Ulfa cutting mat. So what's up, Ben, if you're watching this? I like your cutting mat. 
Uh-oh, I'm getting paint all over mine. Okay, here we go. So you'll notice I'm trying, especially at the top of the shapes where the two colors meet, I'm trying to keep my strokes parallel to, what are, what are they parallel to? So parallel to the top of the bottom hexagons um, and just keeping them horizontal as I blend the two colors together. And um, that keeps the, uh, blends smoother looking. If I was going up and down, then the blends would get um, a lot of chop gear. So I'm going up and down to try and kind of get the bottom edge of my dome. But as I get towards the joint in between the pieces of cardboard, I'm trying to keep them, the strokes horizontal, the blend horizontal. Around to that other side. There we go. So part of my practice, I have spent a long time um, thinking about theme parks and um, what's good and what's bad about simulating travel um, and collecting pictures of fake places. And I liked thinking about Buckminster Fuller right now rather than Walt Disney, even though both Disney and Buckminster Fuller were interested in domes. So like Buckminster Fuller invented this dome, which is a buckyball, um, which is the same shape as Buckminster Fullerene. Um, he also invented uh, geodesic domes, which are, I think, all made out of triangles. And um, Epcot Center in Disney World is a giant geodesic dome. Um, and both Buckminster Fuller and Walt Disney were interested in kind of utopian ways of structuring society through architecture. And I think that's interesting, especially right now, um, when we all kind of have a chance to reflect on how we would like the future to go. And uh, even when things feel dystopian, um, we have an opportunity to think about ways to make things better. Um, and so I like Buckminster Fuller a little bit better than Walt Disney for this because Disney was a little bit more of a totalitarian and did not support labor rights. Um, like I like his color voice in his movies and stuff, but I think it's important to be critical of things that you love. Okay. So, now the dome is fully painted. Let's check it out. So you can see how the colors blend together. Um, and this is your uh, cool utopian cardboard dome. Thanks for coming to my studio.